Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our special time of uh, our ordination service for uh, our brother, Pastor Swanu. And uh, so uh, great to see you here and the whole family in Victoria. And those who are here also from the Covenant Life International Church um, in Belconnen, the church plants from Woden Valley, and uh, to you, members and friends of Woden Valley Alliance Church. Um, For those who don't know me, I'm Ken Graham. I'm the president of the Christian and Missionary Alliance at this season. And uh, my guest this morning is also Reverend Dr. Rod Russell Brown, who is the uh, uh, chairman of our licensing council. Stand up for a minute and just wave at the pretty people. This is Rod. Welcome, Rod. (coughs) Rod is also our past president of the CMA of Australia and gives me great hope that there is life after the presidency. There is, so, uh, which is really cool. My task today is simply to uh, speak on Christian leadership and uh, some of the elements of that. This is a very long topic. We could talk about it for hours, but uh, I will not do that. I promise the calendar will not change as we uh, share this morning. So let me pray first, and then we'll, I'll share a couple of quick announcements. God of grace, in all things, we thank you that you are indeed uh, superintending and watching over all that is happening in our lives. And Lord, as we gather today to offer you worship and also to have a special time of celebration of the preparation for ministry and the call for ministry that you gave to Pastor Swanu. In all things, Lord, we give you thanks. We pray, Lord, that we will continue to be pointers to your love and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay, so um, the uh, mission with churches, that is our call as Christian Missionary Alliance people. It's to everyone, everywhere, all the time. That simply means that we are called to be genuine Christians at every moment and share the gospel at every opportunity that we get. And we do this together. Now, those of you who are uh, new to the CMA, there are two places we'd love you to connect with us. One is the webpage, cma.org.au. You can jump on there. Lots of stuff on there about the Alliance. And also on our Facebook page, um, which you can see the logo, uh, CMA Australia. You don't have to go to, you know, CMA of uh, Tonga or something. Go to the CMA of Australia and you can catch up with us there. So, leadership development classes. We will be resuming those. We had to pause everything we were doing, leadership development and also our deeper life seminars uh, during the COVID season. And it's too late to do them now in the end of this year. So we will come back to you with information about those a little bit later on. I'll give you an advanced look at our Faith Promise uh, promotional material for this For this season, there are a number of posters that we'll be sending out to the churches. All of Jesus for all the world. Sounds like a pretty good uh, Alliance logo, doesn't it? All of Jesus, not just part of the gospel, just a little bit of the gospel, all of who Jesus is for the whole world, not just for uh, certain individuals or certain special people. Everybody needs to hear about who Jesus is and what he has done for us. I want to thank the church also for your um, ongoing support of our faith promise and uh, for the support you give uh, generously, weekly, monthly, however you do it, to support our overseas staff, to support our national staff, our college and our church plans. These are the new brochures which you'll be getting um, as we get closer to the missionary convention season and Pastor Ben will give you uh, all you need to know about that. Okay, let's talk about Pastor teacher. Now to each one, according to scripture, 1 Corinthians, now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Now I'll come back to that. I want you to note that though. To each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. But also then the uh, next verse, and I'm going to turn this way because I forgot my glasses. My, my official staff in the second row here um, is uh, going to help me with glasses later on. And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry to the building up of the body of Christ. Now, first of all, we note that it's for the common good. To each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit. You all have 
uh, those who know Christ, you all have a spiritual gift, at least one, that is given to you as a blessing, as a grace gift, as it were, by the Spirit to be a part of the overall ministry of the entire church. So everybody has at least one who, are, who, who know the Lord. The Spirit has given you a gift. Uh, now, that could be various gifts, but there was a list just a minute ago there. One of them was noted particularly as pastor or teacher or evangelist and those kind of gifts. But I want to note it's for the common good is where I'd like to start. My gifting is pastor, teacher, administration. Rod's gifting is pastor, teacher, very much so now because he's working with the, Bob, with, uh, the uh, Australian College of Ministry, uh, also uh, leadership. And the gifts are not given for us just to enjoy ourselves. Whatever your gift is that God has given you to participate in the ministry of the church, it is a gift that he has given for the common good of the whole church. I know some people like to think in some circles that their gift is specially given to them to promote themselves or to create, you know, you'll never see Ken Graham Ministries, for example. That would, to me, that's just anathema. But because it's all about Jesus, it's not about us as individuals, okay? So let's just push pause there and note that the gifts of the Spirit are for the common good, for the church and gift of evangelist and teacher and preacher for the community as well. Each one of you has something to contribute to the ministry of your local church, given for the common good. To equip the saints for the work of ministry. Now, this is a fascinating uh, thing to consider because I meet so many people come from traditions where, what do you mean to equip the saints for the work of ministry? Well, who are the saints? Nothing to do with Melbourne football team. That's right. Very good. I, the saints are the believers, according to the scripture. Um, you are saints. The, the, the scripture refers to the saints who are there, the saints who live here. You are indeed followers of Christ, believers in Christ, saints. It's a fascinating thing because we commonly think of saints as being a little statue in the corner there and you, you go and leave a bit of bread or something there and, and it, somehow it's going to help you. Um, but we are the saints, all right? Now, the role of the pastor teacher is to do all the work and work 24 hours every day, seven days a week in order the church can sit on its um, collective... Um, uh, seat, <clears throat> seat, uh, <laughs> scratching for the word there. Uh, so, and and watch the performance. No, no, no. It's never intended to be that way. We have made it that way as human beings. To equip the saints for the work of ministry is our role, uh, particularly those who are in uh, pastor, teacher, uh, elder. Roles is to equip you, to release you, to help you find your gift, to fan that flame and to see that gift uh, activated and used in the church. So that's a very important thing because, again, that's for the common good. If I just do everything or if Ben or Swanu or Rod, we just do everything and you just sit back and watch, well, that's going to burn us out for starters. And secondly, the church remains inactive the church remains not doing what it is called to do. So it's for the common good. To bring us into unity, God has chosen to establish leaders in the church. Now, Christian leadership is not a construct or something that Rod and I just made up the other day in our constitution. It was, yeah, sorry to, to burst your bubble, Rod. <laughs> it was a couple of years ago, actually. But uh, the, the whole idea of... God establishing leadership is a function of the New Testament. And so, but there are a couple of things we want to note about leadership. There are two equally dangerous errors concerning leadership in the church. One is to reject leadership altogether. There are some uh, communities where they totally reject the idea of leadership, of deacons, of elders, of, of those who hold a, uh, a, a role in the church. Now, we know what we know about deacons and elders and their qualifications and how they should operate from the New Testament. Um, it is clearly taught in the New Testament there is a leadership structure and a function that has to be exercised with grace and with care and with maturity in the empowering presence of the Spirit. 
So that's one error is to, to ditch leadership altogether and have nothing to do with leadership. The second one is to build too much of a distinction between clergy and laity. Now, their, team, their terms that we've made uh, ourselves as human beings, clergy are simply meaning those who hold um, an office and laity meaning the members of the church. And so to, to have that distinction too much is not helpful. So, for example, if I was a, uh, uh, a particular kind of priest, you would have to come to me to get grace. You would have to come to me and confess your sins in order to be forgiven your sins. That's not the biblical position. The biblical position is you can go to God, you can, you can say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for I'm a sinner. And guess what happens? He does. Isn't that amazing? You don't have to come and give me a gift and 10 bucks and, you know, uh, whatever else in order to, for me to intercede on your behalf. God has no grandchildren. God has only children. And you can all, you can all do that yourselves. So this distinction between clergy and laity, if it's amplified too much, there is a leadership role, don't get me wrong, but to amplify the, the special magic powers of uh, those who are ordained is not uh, a biblical concept. Now, Rod and I and Swanu are wearing uh, sashes today that is simply a function of our ordination ceremonies today. We are but men. We are not doing any magic up here today. We are simply a symbol of our role in, in the church leadership. There is one body of believers. Amen? Sorry, let's try that again. I just want to make sure you're not asleep in the back row, okay? There is one body of believers, amen? amen. Yeah, thank you. That's much better. Okay, and within that body of believers, the Spirit grants gifts for ministry and leadership. And today we'll be uh, recognising the granting and calling uh, for Pastor Swanu uh, in that area of, uh, of leadership and, uh, when he, and he's being ordained today. So pastors are one who, of many who minister in the church. Their role is to equip the people to minister. We've already noted that. But the pastoral gift is one of many who minister. They're not the only one who ministers. Church leaders don't employ pastors. Pastors, uh, we are, we are uh, for that kind of role, we are called by God to exercise that role, whether we are paid or not, actually. Um, we are released from secular work to concentrate on the ministry. Notice the way I, I put that, right? I am not the employee, as it were, of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. Ben is not the employee, of, uh, it, spiritually speaking, of the Woden Valley Alliance Church. We are called by God to exercise a ministry, whether we're paid or not. But it is our practice to those who are gifted to release them to practice that gift without also having to work five days a week and try and pastor at the same time doesn't work. We just end up with burnout. So they are gifted and called, not employed to do your work or mine. You see, what I'm trying to come to is that we are all involved in the ministry. We don't make a tithe or an offering so that Ben does everything or so Swanu does everything. We make a tithe and offering to God, according to the scripture, but to release also workers uh, to concentrate on the ministry and the gifting that they have. We release them from secular work to concentrate on the ministry they are called to and gifted to do. So the role of pastor teacher is, is a fascinating thing. Um, I want to pause here for a little bit. We are called to lead as a shepherd leads. Okay, so when you think of a, a shepherd, all right, so what we've got is we've got the sheep, here, right? And I'm the shepherd. I'm on my quad bike. Um, I've got a couple of blue heelers and I want the sheep to go from here over to the back corner, right? So to tootle on the thing, rev the engines and the, the dogs come on the side and bark and we shepherd the sheep over to the back corner, right? That's how it works for Australian sheep. <laughs> And the elders, are the, the elders are the little blue cattle dogs, you know, come on, bite, bite you on the, uh, on the uh, ankle. 
and to get you to motivate over there. And I'm up here as the pastor on the quad bike, tootling and shouting at you to shift you. Now, that's a common understanding of what it is to be a shepherd in Australia. You'll see that all over the place. You go out into the bush. What's the New Testament concept of the shepherd is different. The New Shepherd concept, concept of, the, is of the shepherd is the shepherd proceeds. The shepherd guides and the sheep follow. You see how we've got to get our Aussie way of doing things out of our minds. The shepherd knows the sheep by name. The sheep know him, that he will lead them into safe pasture and to where there is, uh, where there is food, where there is shelter. So shepherds are called to lead as shepherds. Okay. Shepherds lead, feed, protect, and correct. I'm sorry, I'm moving. Where's, where's the camera? What camera am I supposed to be looking at? That one? I'm just not used to that. So lead, feed, protect, and correct. We lead. He leads. He calls the sheep by name. They know his voice. He knows them by name. They're to good water, to food. Uh, yes, he shears them, but we won't ponder too much on that one for the moment. Uh, disciplines the sheep. He sleeps last, wakes early, gives his life for them because sheep need a shepherd. That's what it means to be a shepherd, okay? Um, it's not just uh, putting him out the front with a couple of blue healers. Let's come back to this one here. He disciplines the sheep. He sleeps last and wakes early, gives his life for them. They know his voice and he knows them by name. Clearly, there is a leadership role in being a shepherd to care for the flock that God has given us. In a biblical sense, for those who are uh, pastors and teachers, there are a number of things to consider. A pastor teacher um, of a local church is... Uh, required to cast vision in a local church, to, to seek God for a preferred future. Um, I put it this way, the role of the leader is to discuss, is to describe the current reality and paint a preferred future and the church moves towards that. And that's part of vision casting. Uh, those, those who are in Christian leadership are also required to communicate well not only to communicate the word of God so that it is heard and understood and lived out in our lives, but we communicate the vision, what God is doing in our community, how we're going to reach our community and our world. Shepherding is a function. We'll come back to that in a moment. Management is a function of Christian leadership. We have to be, uh, you don't have to be the best manager in the world, but you do need to be a good manager of um, activities and people. Long life learning uh, or lifelong learning, uh, if you pronounce it properly, is also a function of leadership. We should be, as leaders, we don't get our degree. Um, Swanu has finished his, uh, his extra studies he's done for ordination. He doesn't just stop there and say, beauty, now I'm ordained, no more learning for me. It's not like that. All of us need to be lifelong learners. There is pain in leadership as well. Yes, Absolutely. There is pain in leadership. It's part of leadership. If you serve for recognition or for fame or for money, you're not going to last very long in Christian leadership. So we need to realise that this whole idea of pain, though, let's just pause there for a moment. Brother Swanu, there will be days um, where you will say, OK, God, what's going on? Surely it was meant to be easier than this. And I don't accept resignations on Monday mornings, by the way. <clears throat> uh, you have to wait till Tuesday if you're going to resign because I give you a day to, um, to think about it. But we, we don't uh, uh, expect or we shouldn't expect that, you know, uh, the ministry role is going to be without challenges because it will have many challenges, brother, uh, as you know. Also, um, there, the sheep have a function in this as well because there is also the pain side, but there's also the great celebratory side as we see people give their lives to Christ, see people grow in Jesus, find their gift, reach and reach out to the world around them with the ministry of Jesus. There is also an anointing that comes and that is sometimes tangible. Uh, you may feel that. 
or you may also just know that God has granted a particular gift, and that gift is recognised by your peers. So uh, uh, Rod will explain later that uh, someone who has been through a whole process of uh, with peer review, uh, peer study, and uh, before he is ordained. But there is a sense, Swan, who you may well feel a sense of the coming of the Spirit in a, with a fresh anointing as we have our ordination ceremony. Um, but you will know an anointing for ministry and leadership that comes from God. So much to consider when it comes to Christian leadership. Now, the shepherd's life is not an easy one. It does involve, if you're a shepherd, using the New Testament model, it's long hours, it's difficult sheep, uh, rough terrain and environment, often suffering loss of personal time, but for the love of the sheep and to follow the master shepherd. Now, let me, let me let you in on a little secret. Sometimes Christians don't get along. I know it's a shock for those of you who are not realising that, uh, but sometimes we don't get along. Sometimes sheep are a little ornery. Uh, I will say in brackets, sometimes shepherds are a little ornery too, um, but just for the sake of the exercise, we're talking about the shepherd's role. Sometimes we, we, we need to push through, as it were. Sometimes we need uh, Brother Swanu, I'm, this is mostly for Swanu, uh, the, the message. There are times when we need to push through and work out some of the relationships and challenges that happen in churches. One of the uh, most famous ones I, I sometimes share is the church meeting where we're fighting over the colour of the carpet. Um, we're going to renovate the building, not this one, I just, it's okay, just make sure I note that. Uh, when we renovate the building, which should we have? Should we have red carpet or blue carpet? Both. <laughs> Both. Purple. <laughs> No, but no, no, we don't want to have purple. What's, what's the football team with red and blue? Easts. I don't want the Easts. No, yeah, that's right. So the, the debate is in the churches, should we have like a, a, the stay, uh, the, the podium, in red or in blue? Because after all, red is the colour of the sacrifice of the shedding of the blood of Christ. We should be recognising that. Blue, however, is the colour of loyal, uh, royalty and therefore the great king we should be having blue. And the meeting is going on and people are getting upset and arguing about what colour the carpet should be and people are leaving the church over it. You know, I mean, that are dumb, <laughs> if I can put it in those words, isn't it? But sometimes as human beings, we, we get a little bit funny about, uh, about things like that. Also pastors as well, uh, shepherds as well. Oh, let me tell you a story. I was actually at a, at a, at a funeral of, uh, with uh, my br another brother was conducting the funeral and we'd had the service, we'd gone out to the graveside and we're standing at the graveside, you can imagine the scene here and there's a little button that we just click here or the funeral home people, you push the button and the, everything goes down and it's the end, right? So he's at the end, just about, and his phone rings in his pocket. And he answered it. Uh, hello? Yes, I'm just a little busy at the moment. I'm in, in the middle of a funeral. <laughs> I mean, sometimes shepherds do strange things as well. But the whole idea of shepherds is to say that the Christian life and, and, the, uh, and the leadership role, there are difficulties, but there are also great, great joys. Let's move along. The pastor shepherd, and el the pastor, shepherd, and elders are the ones who guide and care for a, uh, a local congregation of the flock of Jesus. In, nationally, we have presence a national board which oversees all of our ministry and all of our pastors. And we are Presbyterian and congregational in structure in that way. We are governed by elders, but there is a participation of the congregation in all of those leadership uh, decisions, including the election and calling of elders and pastors. But the role of the pastor teacher also, pastors are called to feed. Now, what are we going to feed you? We're going to have cake later on. <laughs> Isn't that cool? The last ordination I did, we had uh, roast pig. I could smell it out the back, uh, rotating, but we're not doing that today. Um, yes, we're going to feed you some cake later on. But what do we primarily feed you is 
the Word of God, of course. Now, I just want to note uh, a, a, a thing here, Mission 119 by John Soper. It's an app. If you want to work your way through the whole Scripture with some teaching uh, 20 minutes a day, it's an app that reminds you every day, gives you a reading, gives you an explanation of that reading. These are the kind of things that we develop as leaders in order that the the sheep are equipped and understand and learn and apply the Scripture. But pastors are also called to protect from false teachers, controlling people, self-focused uh, business, uh, business becoming the business of the church. The church actually becomes a business that has to be protected at all costs. There's a famous one of those happening in our media right now, wolves in sheep's clothing. Now, shepherds, have, shepherds are not crooks. They have a crook. You know what a crook is? Okay, just to put us all on one page, it's a pretty much a stick. Um, I don't think in New Testament days it was a stick with the hook in it. Perhaps it had a bit of a, a thing in it to pull sheep. But shepherds have a crook. Why? Oh, what's the point of giving you a crook if you don't use it? I'll just lead on it, you know. The, sheep, the shepherd has a, a, a stick to whack the wolves. Okay, they didn't have, um, uh, with all the kids in the room, they didn't have weapons to be able to repel the wolves in those days, right? So they had a stick. Then you had to hit the stick. Or you had to pull a sheep out of a, um, if it went into a hole or something in the river, you've got to somehow rescue the sheep. That's what a, a crook is for. But we have to protect the church. There are false teachers out there. There are um, uh, people who demand their way. There are people who uh, exercise gifts inappropriately. There are people who just, who for some reason or another, don't get that the activation and use of gifts is for the common good and for the blessing of the whole church. It's not about us. Okay, let's say that together, shall we? One, two, three. It's not about me. Yeah, all right, let's say, say, it, say it with me because I want you to personalise it. It's not about me. That's right. Never has been, never will be. It's all about Jesus. But so there is a protection role in the role of the pastor shepherd as well. And we're called to correct. From going astray, uh, from those things, we do need to bring correction sometimes. Who likes to be corrected? Yeah, all right. Well, we've got some counselling sessions later for those who like to be corrected. <laughs> but we, um, we don't uh, like to be corrected as human beings. Um, I remember a very famous uh, case pretty close to this church where the exercise of uh, a prophetic gift was done in the morning service. A brother got up the back, out of order, by the way, and just blurted out that uh, elder so-and-so is having an affair with Mrs. Kafups and uh, the elders ought to do something about it. This was a word of knowledge, a prophecy, according to this individual. Turned out it wasn't the case. Turned out it was absolute nonsense. So there was a role of elders to be, uh, and pastor to be able to shepherd that and to deal with that um, because sometimes we, we get ahead of ourselves and we take on gifts that we just don't have. The other thing that happened in that same church was somebody actually got up and prophesied about a year later that somebody in the church had uh, terminal cancer. What are you to do when that happens in a public service? The exercise of leadership in appropriateness with the pastor and elders. What we did was we, got the, we spoke to the person immediately after the service. We prayed for them, the person who was said to be sick. We took them down to get tested. We paid for all the tests because it was a public um, expression. Turned out they weren't sick at all. And so what has to happen then is we have to come back and discipline the person who is pretending or thinking that they are a prophet of some sort. Clearly not a prophet. Now, having said that, I want to note there is the genuine gift of prophecy. There is the genuine gift, the exercise of prophecy. It is specific. It's not just, you know, someone here this morning had a fight with their wife this week. Come on. <laughs> so, or, you know, uh, or, or something generic like that. Someone here this morning has a sore back. Uh, you had a sore back for a month. Th that, that's, I think the exercise of a prophetic gift is more than that. If God gives you a word for somebody, it's going to be specific and right on the mark. Divine guessing is not what we're looking for. 
and if someone does speak a word of prophecy, then there is also uh, a verification of that, um, a leadership function in that. There was one, um, those of you who have been around here for a while, uh, young Jeremy Blanchard came to me um, years ago before the, uh, sorry, it was uh, Philip Davis, and said, I have a word I believe God is, wants me to share today in the service. I quickly grabbed the elders. We heard the word from him. We believed that that was indeed something um, from the Lord. Um, at the end of the service, he got up and shared the word. And he said, I believe I have a, a word for you, uh, Josh. Um, this word is that God is calling you. He's calling you into a specific role. You need to uh, stop doing what you're doing and follow God in obedience. Well, the young Jeremy just uh, immediately responded and said, yeah, that is spot on. I've been resisting. God working in my life and my call into what I'm called to do. Specific, release, blessing, and the church is encouraged. So sometimes we're called to correct, but also, so there's the four, lead, feed, protect, and correct. We shepherd you to Christ, not to us. Please don't ever uh, think that just because we get to share and teach that we are shepherding you to us. If you are following me or if you are following Swanu or you're following Ben or, or Rod, then please stop doing that. It's not going to be good for you. It's not going to end well. Our role is to shepherd you towards Jesus. He is the one we follow. He's got all the stuff. I've got nothing but the presence of, of Christ and the anointing of Christ to teach and to lead. He's the one that can forgive sin. He's the one that will fit you for heaven. He is the one that will eventually say, well done, good and, ser good, uh, good and faithful servant, and hug you and say, let's go and have the celebration party. That's not a function of leadership. So we shepherd you to Christ, not to us, and we encourage you in the deeper life and mission we are all called to. Let me finish with this and I'll hand our time across to our brother Rod. These are Canadian wild geese. Anybody ever heard of Canadian wild geese? Yeah, I know, the Canadians in the room, uh, uh, you know, uh, Christian is smiling. Oh, do you know I'm Canadian, Christian? I activated my Canadian citizenship last year. So, uh, yeah, I like maple syrup much more now. So <laughs> the Canadian wild geese, these are a fascinating bird. They, they fly north and south and uh, have a look at this picture. See, up on the front there, um, some goose has to lead. Okay? <laughs> so it's okay. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, you guys right? Okay. Yeah, some goose like me has to lead. And then you have the, they, they have this sort of formation. And as the goose who is leading turns right, guess what? The congregation follows. And what's really fascinating about this, there's a couple of birds immediately behind the lead goose, right? And there's a fascinating thing, the lead, the, the, the lead goose honks. Honk, honk. And then there's a honk by the two behind, honk, and then it goes down the line. Honk, 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 honk. Honk, 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 honk. Isn't that fascinating? The one who is uh, leading is uh, calling, and everybody says, we're here, man. We're still behind you. We're following. Isn't that a fascinating thing? And when the lead goose gets tired, comes down into the second place, and one of the second place goose, uh, geese, gooses, <laughs> takes over and starts to honk. And the lead goose, having a time of break, starts honking for the other goose. Isn't that a fascinating thing in nature. So I share that simply to say that um, we are all in a sense part of the same team, Team Jesus. There is a role for Christian leadership. We don't want to overemphasize that role, but we do realize that there is a shepherding. We all need a shepherd. I need a shepherd too. I need to have shepherding in my life as well. Let me pray for you and then I'm going to hand over to uh, Dr. Russell Brown to take the rest of our ordination time. Father, I thank you for an opportunity to share uh, briefly this morning on what it is that we are called to do uh, as leaders. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to, uh, to go back to our New Testament, to go back to the Scripture and read on this topic. I pray, Lord, that those who have 
a leadership function, would exercise it as shepherds. Realize the tremendous opportunity there is for the good of the flock, to protect the flock, to lead the flock, but also, Lord, to uh, correct if needed. So help us, Lord, to understand that you have established leaders, you have established a, a pattern of leadership in our church. Help us to lead well. Help us not to be prideful as leaders. Help us to be pointers to Jesus. And help us to teach your word faithfully, correctly. And help us to encourage each member of the church to find their gift, to be active in their gift for the common good of the whole body and the whole ministry. And Lord, help us also to ever be focused on the great commission you have given us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every person. So thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, amen.